Guys, what's going on? My name is Ryan. I like to trade ETFs and make videos of the technical analysis that I'm seeing. Today we've got gold uh, trading at 1228.22 right now, and we are on the weekly chart. And I wanted to point out two things. Uh, first one is that we are running into long-term resistance at the point right now, and we are also coming into the apex of what might potentially be a longer-term support level. Um, we can also see that there has been a divergence taking place here, and I think that we might finally be seeing it starting to take root. It started back here in uh, late 2014, and it's from our RSI, and we've been slowly moving up ever since then. So from the weekly, let's go to the daily. Here in the daily, we can see that long-term resistance coming into play and that longer-term support line also coming into play. Uh, all these uh, bubbles right here are from a past video. I don't want to delete them, I guess. It's the Battle for Matter Matterhorn. If you guys want to watch that video, it is in my gold playlist. Uh, a couple things I wanted to note on this chart is that, again, we are coming into this apex level over here. Some very interesting things will come in the next several weeks to months as far as the direction of gold, and we'll be able to get a pretty good read in the next few months. We can see our divergence that we saw uh, a couple weeks ago coming into play. We had our RSI making three basically identical highs and price making uh, higher highs each time. This was actually, you know, a bear divergence right here from this RSI to this RSI because it slants downward while price stays the same. And we can start to see that take root a little bit here. We did catch a bit of a bounce over here. From this divergence, we see our first low right here corresponding with the lowest low in our stochastic. And our higher low in our stochastic aligns with our lowest low down here. So this is a bullish divergence, and we're starting to see that take root in the charts. Uh, this consolidation zone, this FIB confluence level, uh, runs across the length of this pattern. This pattern has been playing out for all of this year, and we'll get to that on the two-hour. So let's go to the two-hour. On the two-hour, we've got some interesting things playing out here, a uh, lot happening in this chart, so we're going to walk through it one at a time. As far as those Elliott Wave traders go, I definitely see an Elliott Wave playing out here. We had our one, two, three, four, five, and now we've got our retracement, A, B, C. Um, as far as the pattern traders go, I think that we might see a big M formation which would put us in the territory of Gartley's. Uh, as far as big M's go, this is kind of what I'm talking about here. We uh, come down and you see the M kind of take shape right here. And then it's actually a bullish pattern and it goes up higher. I have, I do want to prelude here in uh, my gold video, I should have said it right off the bat, that I do have a bullish bias towards gold. And uh, just take that into account while you're watching this video. Uh, but it's, if you're a bear, you know, don't just skip over. It's always good to hear all sides of the, the trade. Uh, so this could be a big M playing out right here. We've got this big, left side, right side, coming down to about identical levels here. As far as Fibonacci goes, it looks like we were supported at the 50% Fibonacci range, which uh, I had my first target on, and my second target would be this ultimate uh, bottom down here at our fourth wave. It would also come and complete our big M. This was a Fib confluence level, and so I was fairly confident that this 50% mark uh, would hold up fairly well. As far as target two goes, I had 1198. You could just round it to 1200, but uh, I think that if it does get down to 1200, that it'll go ahead and be a stop loss poke. I've kind of got this in the corner right here. 1198 is the stop loss poke. It'll get everybody out of their long term gold positions. And uh, if that happens, two things might happen. It might just be a stop loss poke, and the algorithms will buy that right up at 1198. Or the other thing that might happen is uh, too many people might get stopped out, and uh, we'll go down to 1180 which would hit our long-term support line here. Smaller term Elliott wave that I saw coming down here on this ABC retracement pattern is the potential for this to be a completed Elliott wave here, which adds to my bullish bias, I guess. So we come down one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, that would be a completed Elliott wave. I had a bit of a wedge drawn here, and I'm not sure if you want to call that correct here, uh, but it does look from the chart on the two hour that we did break this long-term overhead uh, channel that we've been in right here. And this is a very bullish sign for gold as we go forward here. This RSI level here, I put a little line just because our RSI kind of popped up and moved sideways. This is typically kind of a bearish signal for me. It's a, it's a neutral signal. It's telling me that I want to buy on the next dip because it did break above 50 and the direction is shifting a little bit. But since it's weak and not moving up further after this point, uh, you see it kind of just rolls over, rolls over, rolls over. I don't think that it had the strength at the time to move forward. And so I drew this line here to remind me of that and uh, to buy on this dip right here. I also uh, was expecting a dip because we have some divergences here with our slow stochastic making a high and then a lower high while price makes a higher high. But from a longer term 
if you want to measure this as our low, this would be a hidden bullish divergence. So we make this low here, and then this higher low on the price, and then our stochastic makes this low, and then this lower low. This represents an overreaction uh, from sellers, and also I kind of view it as the indicator cooling down from these overbought levels up here, potentially overbought as far as the stochastic goes. So from the two hour, let's go to let's go to the one hour chart, and uh, in this movement down, I saw a bear flag, and uh, I think I talked about that in my video next week or last week, and we basically come down and we flagged out here, and this was a bear flag because volume did not support this move at all. Uh, what I did here, and what you're supposed to do is, if I were to delete these lines here, I guess I'm going to leave it because it's kind of pretty right now, but um, you just clone these and then you drag them over. And that is your measured move, which came down to about right here. And uh, that was fairly accurate as far as measured moves for a bear flag go. So if you got in, uh, you know, JDST or something, uh, after you saw this breakdown, uh, that would be a very good play. From the one hour to the 30 minute, you could have, you know, looked at this right here and said this was a head and shoulders. I think that would have been a valid play. We got our left shoulder, our head, and our right shoulder. I just drew the neckline right here. And once we broke below that, you can see that we had a, base, a massive dump to the downside. Currently, what I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing a couple things going on, and uh, it's getting hard to identify them. One, because the longer term chart, like the daily or weekly, is coming into the apex, and so I want to be skeptical because that apex could move to the upside or it could move to the downside. And I don't want to be in the wrong side of the trade when that happens. Another reason is that it's just naturally somewhat challenging to predict the bottom, call the bottom, or pick a pattern from a breakout like I think that we are having in gold right now. Uh, I think we are in a breakout, like I said earlier, is because we got above this multi-week channel, this black line right here, and we did so with conviction if you look at the volume right here. There's a ton of bull volume coming into this trade. Uh, it's about the most volume we've seen since we broke down here. So this is very positive as far as the bullish perspective goes. Now I see two potential patterns that could be playing out here. I see an ascending triangle. Uh, price comes down, touches the top, and then we come down and set our A. This might be B here, this might be C, this might be D. And if this breakout doesn't immediately continue on Monday or it continues to move sideways, I can easily see us come down to hit this E, which would also support a breakout trade because it comes and retests previous resistance. Resistance becomes support and we break out at this E point right now. So I can see this ascending triangle take place. You can see us coming down to here before continuing our path upwards now. The second pattern that I'm seeing is a head and shoulders. It's pretty easy to identify, though I think it might be a complex head and shoulders. Complex head and shoulders is when there are two shoulders on both sides. So I think that we might have our left, left shoulder, our left shoulder, our head, our right shoulder, and our right, right shoulder right here. This red line right here is my subjective neckline. We go across here, and this is the breakout point. When we break out, we come back and retest this this neckline. That kind of gets to the part of what I was trying to explain over here, is I could see us rolling over and retesting this previous resistance line. This was previous resistance here, and we came back and touched it. We moved on upwards, and we are continuing to follow the breakout trend. As far as measured moves go here, I've got um, this dotted black line here, and if we draw that from our absolute bottom here up to the neckline, Take a clone of this here. I'll just delete this real quick. Show you guys. If we delete this here. We dragged it over to the point of breakout, which is about right here. You see that it stretches up to this level, and that corresponds very well with our end point. So this would be a nice measured move if you had identified this head and shoulders right away. The nice thing about head and shoulders is that the measured move is often just the beginning. Head and shoulders is one of the strongest bottoming patterns, or in this case, the inverse head and shoulders. And there's often continuation in that direction long after the measured move is over, which uh, would further um, lead to my bullish bias on gold. So as far as predictions go next week, I see perhaps two different price paths. First price path I see is I think that we could go back and uh, do this retouch here. And then we would break out, probably move just above our previous breakout, come back to test this resistance level before moving up higher. I guess my next uh, major area of resistance is going to be at this longer term 78.6% FIB level. These are in bold here, and uh, we can also see it coming into play with uh, this breakout right here. It got stopped right away at this FIB level. So if we do take this route, 
I see this being the price path. I think we'll go down to E, we'll make a higher high, come back to retest this resistance level, and then we'll move up higher with some conviction. The other possibility that I'm seeing, which could be equally likely, is that this is a bull flag. And we'll just do a quick measured move of the bull flag. And our measured move would get us to about um, this area right here where we originally broke down, which would make a lot of sense, actually. Um, so I can see either of these scenarios taking place next week. All right, guys, that's been my analysis on gold. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully it gave you some direction as far as what to be expecting next week. Quick, let's uh, let's take a look at my my uh, last call. My my let's quick take a look at uh, how I did in my prediction from uh, looks like July eighth. TradeView has this nice little setting where you can post a, a trade and um, review it. So you see my targets here: twelve fifteen, eleven ninety eight, eleven eighty three. We got to my target one, which is 12.15, and I had two predicted price paths. I had, um, you know, I thought we were either going to move up and then just collapse down to 11.98, or we were going to move up, set a higher low, and then get to this black line here, and then probably move sideways before continuing on upwards. So let's see how I did. Looks like it's uh, following the ladder prediction, which is the bullish version. You can see that we uh, flagged out at this point right here before moving up higher. All right, guys, that has been my prediction as far as gold goes for next week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching me every week, and I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Bye.